Bugatti have experienced a very changeable history. Rising to success in the 1900s, supported by a remarkable racing pedigree, only to falter and then rise again and then fall again and then rise again to modern day success. Having recently introduced their groundbreaking tourbillon hypercar, today we take a look into the life story of the incomparable Bugatti Automobile Company. Ettore Bugatti was born in 1881 to a semi-wealthy artistic family with a brother who was a very talented sculptor. Ettore was also a very keen artist but he didn't want to compete with his brother who was far more talented than him so Ettore decided to focus on engineering. Ettore signed up for an engineering apprenticeship with a company that built bicycles and sewing machines and that's where he really found his love for engineering. In 1900, Ettore completed his apprenticeship and left the company to start designing and building his first automobile. During this period, he was constantly contacted by a car company called Didichri based in Germany to build and design cars for them and at this stage he was only 19 years old. Ettore moved to Germany to start working for a company called Deutz in Cologne building their engines and at this stage in the automobile car history the focus was on making the cars more performant by putting more and more power in their engines so making the engines bigger and bigger to provide the performance. Ettore had an epiphany in realizing that instead of just creating more and more powerful engines and making in effect the cars heavier and heavier he had a breakthrough in realizing that lighter engines and in effect lighter cars were better way forward to outperform his competitors. To this end, in 1908, Ettore started developing the Pure Sang in the basement of his house, which took him two years to develop. The Pure Sang features a 1.2 litre four-cylinder engine, which only weighs 365 kilograms. Having realised his true calling in life, Ettore Bugatti moved to Molsheim in France, and there he inaugurated the Bugatti Automobile Company in 1909. Around the same time, Ettore's son, Jean Bugatti, was born. What followed then was the development of the first true Bugatti automobile, which was called the Type 10. And the Type 10 was in production from 1910 to 1914 until all production ceased due to the advent of the First World War. After the First World War, Ettore decided to dedicate his focus on building pure race and sports cars. What followed is considered to be the peak period for the Bugatti Automobile Company. Ettore designed and developed the Type 13 and Type 35 race cars, with the Type 13 winning 400 races and the Type 35 winning 1,000 races and two Le Mans in 1937 and 1939. Following Bugatti's racing success, Ettore went into business with his son, Jean Bugatti, and together they designed and built the first luxury production car for the Bugatti Automobile Company called the Bugatti Royale. At this stage, the Bugatti brand was going from strength to strength and was known as one of the finest automobile companies in the world. And to help to retain that brand strength, Ettore decided to start handpicking his clients for the Bugatti Royale, much in a similar manner as Ferrari and Porsche do nowadays. In the 1920s, Bugatti Bugatti won five Targa Florias and Ettore is on record as describing his competitor Bentley's cars as the world's fastest lorries due to their being dedicated to durability. Ettore Bugatti was a true entrepreneur and designed and developed many other things other than cars, such things as an aeroplane, which actually never got off the ground, railway wagons, bicycles, toy cars, doors, armchairs, surgical equipment and horse riding equipment, to name a few. Three years after the launch of the Bugatti Royale, the Great Depression hit and the Bugatti company nearly went under. Ettore managed to keep the Bugatti company afloat by designing and developing trains for the French government, but it wasn't really enough to keep the company going. It was barely surviving with that financial income. And then in 1939, disaster struck. Bugatti's son, Jean Bugatti, was killed in an accident testing the Type 57. Three weeks after Ettore's son's death, Germany invaded France and the Bugatti company was forced to build cars and torpedoes for the German army. Ettore refused and he was forced to sell the Bugatti company for less than 50% of its true value. 
At this time also Ettore's wife died and unsurprisingly Ettore's own health deteriorated. Ettore was a very passionate man and he never gave up fighting to regain his company and finally in 1947 his Bugatti company was restored to him with all his possessions but would you believe it? Ten days later he died and because he had no heir the company died with him. The first incarnation of the Bugatti Automobile Company ceased to be in 1952. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. In 1987, the Italian tycoon Romano Artioli acquired the Bugatti company and built a whole new factory complex in Modena in Italy and released the first car, the renowned EB110. In 1993, Bugatti acquired the Lotus company and also began development for the EB112. Unfortunately, the resurgence of the Bugatti company only lasted seven years and with only 139 EB110s built, the company went bankrupt in 1995 due to mismanagement. If you take a look online, you see many clips of the dilapidated Bugatti buildings at Modena in Italy. The failing of Bugatti Automobile SPA came about due to Bugatti overspending purchasing Lotus and developing the EB112 in 1993. This along with the global financial crisis and the Gulf War saw the second fall of the Bugatti company in the mid 1990s. Unfortunately the courts rejected an offer put forward by two companies based in Dublin and the Isle of Man which would have injected $31 million to try and keep the company alive. A Roman article dated the 23rd of September 1995 stated and I quote The court turned down a rescue plan put forward by a pair of companies based in Dublin and the Isle of Man under which each would have injected $31 million into the speciality sports car maker in the hopes of keeping it alive. However, unfortunately, the $31 million that was offered by each of those two companies was nowhere near enough to shore up the Bugatti company, which at that time had a debt of $125 million. We now come forward to the modern era of the Bugatti company. In 1998, the Volkswagen Group acquired the Bugatti brand and in 2005, they released the Veyron and then 10 years later in 2015, they released the Chiron, both of those cars named after very successful racing drivers for Bugatti from the mid 1900s. In November 2021, the Volkswagen Group sold 55% of Bugatti Automobile to Rimac Automobile and transferred the remaining 45% to Porsche AG, which was in effect an internal transfer because Porsche AG is owned by the Volkswagen Group. This then resulted in the forming of the Bugatti Rimac Automobile Group. Now up to date and coming all the way forward to current times in 2024, Bugatti Rimac have just announced the release of their latest hypercar, the Bugatti Tourbillon, and this will go into production in 2026. We recently released a video fully documenting in detail the new Bugatti Tourbillon. I'll put a link in the description below.